Uh, David Sullen, thank you very much for talking to West Ham TV. Um, can we just start by getting your, your thoughts and your reflections on the season so far? I think it's a very promising start. Um, and it could have been so much better. You know, what's, what's good, with the exception of Southampton, all the games we lost, we, we could have or lost or drawn, we could have won. We could have beat Tottenham, could have beat Man United, could have beat Hull. So we could be on 18 points. And what's pleasing that, with the, again, with the exception of Southampton, we haven't looked bad against anybody. So we, we perhaps foolishly think we can now play against anyone and give them a run for their money. But time will tell over the season. But it's very, very optimistic times at West Ham. And I think we've got the best team we've had for many years. Have you been surprised how well we've started? Um, I think as a supporter, you, you, I mean, last season you were going to every game thinking, how, how can we get anything out of this? This year we've got every game thinking, well, we can win this. We're looking to win games. Um, so I think after the pre-season, I'm surprised because everyone said we've had a terrible pre-season. We all said, well, it doesn't count for anything. Newcastle had a good pre-season. Look what they've done. You know, So pre-season can give you a very false judgment of how things are going to be. And we said to people, don't panic with the pre-season. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know where, what I expected to get. I mean, I, I, I really... Hope to have a fantastic season. That's all I can say. So I'm, I'm, I'm not that surprised, really. Mm. You know, we bought good, good forwards and good players. Um, but you do need a bit of luck. You need players to hit the ground running, and maybe we've had that bit of luck. Can you just talk to us a bit about about the obviously you mentioned there about the new players that have come in. They've played a massive part in our impressive start. I mean, I mean just talk to us about the, the transfer policy for the summer. There was a, a lot made of a move towards a more attacking style, wasn't there? Yeah, we, we, we decided as a club, unless an outstanding older player came along, we would sign younger players. Uh, but that didn't rule out somebody. If, if they were, but we, we wanted attacking players. We signed two full-backs, albeit one on loan, can both bomb forward. We signed three forwards who were the leading goal scorer in Argentina, the leading goal scorer in Mexico, and the leading goal scorer in French Division 2, which sounds a bit odd, but he seems to have made the jump. Um, so we signed three leading goal scorers, thinking, well, statistically, one or more of them is going to make it. And we hope two or three of them make it. Um, we signed two fantastic midfielders. Um, and we signed one midfielder for the future. And, and that's what we signed. Uh, and, and the whole lot, of, I think 26, 27 is the oldest, and they're, and they're right back to about 18. Mm. So, you know, um, and they've all got a lot to prove. Um, and we're not signing players at the end of their career on huge wages who are maybe too comfortable with life. So we, we've got hungry players who are bought into the West Ham way, bought into attacking bought into working hard, and as they achieve more, we will reward them more. But they have to deliver to the club, and then we will deliver to them. You mentioned the West Ham way. What, what does the West Ham way mean to you, and is this current team the, displaying the West, that? The West Ham way, to me, is how we played in the first half against Liverpool. You know, quick, strong tackling, everybody giving 100%, attacking, trying to score goals. Um, and, and, and beyond that... Um, to be a club that gives back to the community. I mean, we've, we've completely shaken up the community department at the club. And, and, and if, you, if you look at the work they're doing now, it's more than has been done for years and years and years. And that will increase dramatically over the coming. We've got a fantastic guy running the, running the community department now. He's doing a wonderful, wonderful job. And that's all part of the, the West Ham ethos uh, of giving back. Um, We're still doing kids for quids games. We did six last season, probably do six this year. It's it's a mixture of things, but it's 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 behaving in a responsible way. It's playing with passion, playing attacking football, playing passing football, and I think I mean we were at Man United. Believe you me, they were back to the wall playing the long ball, just banging it out. And I thought this is completely up. The last half of that game, we were entrenched in their half trying to score and they were they were just kicking it out anywhere panic every 10 men behind the ball completely panicking uh, and we were the football inside 
A lot of the new players we've, we've spoken about have contrib contributed to that, obviously. We did a lot of our business early this summer. Was that a deliberate move by the board or was it just purely that you got your first choice targets sorted early? No, it, w ideally you'd love to do all your business early. But, it's, but you want to hold back a little bit of ammunition in case something special comes up, like Alex Song. Uh, but the good thing was, because we had a bit of time, we got good players in. And we didn't have to panic and just make desperation by us because we needed players we didn't have time. So, and I think people just don't realise how many hours goes into the transfer side and how stressful it is. And for every player you sign, you try and sign three or four more. So the hours that went into players that didn't sign for us um, in terms of uh, meeting their agents, negotiating with the clubs, for one reason or another, the deals didn't happen. Um, but the players we've got and the prices we paid for them and the wages they're on, it all makes sense uh, for a club of our size and budgets. Uh, and, and, and we have a wage budget which we just cannot exceed and we can only go if we sell players and we have a net transfer gain and then that can increase a little bit. So we can exceed it slightly, um, but only a little bit. Um, and and there's, whatever you do, you can't exceed that and that's the same next season. Uh, when we get the Olympic Stadium, if the rules are still in place, we'll have a big increase in commercial revenue and that can go to the wages. But unless we can increase our commercial revenue, we can't increase the wages. And it's very hard at Upton Park because we're selling everything anyway and you can't sell it any more. And, and we made the decision not to put season ticket prices up this year. Um, so, yeah, it's difficult. Sam made a point after the game uh, on Saturday, uh, Sunday against QPR that uh, he played... played credit to you and, and the work that you've done over the summer and how dedicated you were to bringing new players. Can you just explain to the supporters how exactly it works in terms of bringing players in? Is it something you work very closely with the manager on? We, we, um, we talk every day. Uh, we pursue targets that I've identified or Sam's identified. Um, and you work just round the clock, really. Um, I mean, on Alex's song, we were both speaking to him 11, 12 o'clock at night. Uh, bef to get him on a plane to come to, come to us. Um, with some agents you negotiate for weeks um, and nobody can comprehend how stressful it is. You know, people don't know the true figures, the true facts um, and it is very, very hard and it was the hardest transfer window I've ever known but we did pretty well at the end of it. Do you think it was your best transfer window since you've been at West Ham? I think by a long, long way. Yeah. At this moment in time. Um, I think by a long, long way. Because, I, I, see, I know the wages people are. I know what we paid, what we really paid for players. You know, all the players are incentivised to play. Uh, and we want them to want to play. And that's all they want to do. You know, we've got players who are desperate to do their bit for the club.